Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. In, in the news today is $219 million in longs and shorts are liquidated. Was this healthy for Bitcoin? So what do you think? Was that a good thing or was that a bit bad thing that all these people with these liquidated margin accounts have been liquidated and lost money on those trades? Um, if, if you have a, uh, whether you have a, a positive opinion or a negative opinion, I'd love to hear you, hear from you in the comments below. So be sure to leave a comment below. And in today, we're going to look at a number of different expert analysts and what their opinions are. We're going to talk about a different analyst opinion all the way through the rest of this video. So be sure to stay on board all the way to the end. It is a great video and I think you'll enjoy it. So should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash the like button. It makes a huge difference. Now, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So when it comes to cryptocurrency, it involves a substantial risk of loss. And what you need to do, if you're investing in anything, you need to understand the risks associated with that investment. And so before you invest in Bitcoin, be sure you understand the risks involved. So let me show you some of the upside involved with Bitcoin. If you invest $1,000 in Bitcoin and then sold it three years later, what would you get? Well, if you bought Bitcoin on January 1, 2017 and held it to December 31st, 2019, you would have received $7,206. And so one of the things that people are doing with this leverage trading is they're trying to increase the amount of profit that they would have made. But hey, if they just would have bought and held instead of doing a leverage trade, they probably would have done a whole lot better because leverage trading involves even greater risk. And unfortunately with, with, I mean, you can go to BitMEX and you can do 100X leverage trading. That means you take $1,000, but they're gonna give you $100,000 worth of Bitcoin. The problem with that is if Bitcoin loses, if, if, so if you bet long, that means you think the price is going up, but if it goes down by $1,000, you're going to lose your entire $1,000 investment. And if you've bet $1,000 and leveraged it to a $100,000 on a short trade, that means you're betting that the price is going to go down. But if you're wrong and it goes up by just $1,000, you're going to lose your entire $1,000 investment because the price of Bitcoin went up. And so what happened is, is a bunch of people that had leveraged accounts on BitMEX lost money. If they had just simply bought Bitcoin and held it for three years, they could have turned $1,000 into seven grand. And so learn from other people's mistakes and so that you can become a better trader. That's what this channel, that's what our videos are all about. We're trying to help you learn how to make profit in this market. And one of the things that you want to keep in mind is that all these guys who are trying to sell you on day trading, they may not be giving you the best information. So Mohit Sarot, a founding partner at Bitazu Capital and a prominent analyst explained, market liquidated over leveraged participants. Notice he said over leveraged. Now if you had uh, $1,000 and you bought $2,000 worth of Bitcoin, your leverage isn't nearly as dramatic and you have a lot more wiggle room for the price of Bitcoin to move without actually liquidating your account. Um, but for me personally, hey, when you're talking a $7,000 return in three years, why even mess with it? Why even do something that might keep you up at night when all you need to do is buy it, let it sit there, forget about it, Several years later, take another look at it. So, uh, 123 million in shorts, 96 million dollars in longs, all in a span of 24 hours. And so, there were millions of dollars lost by the people who had invested in it. Now, these numbers, the 123 and the 96, doesn't tell you exactly how much was lost by traders. 
I made a mistake in a previous video, in several previous videos where I was talking about people getting liquidated and I said, that's $123 million that people lost. Well, the reality is, is if you had bought, taken $1,000 and bought $100,000 in Bitcoin, that $100,000 would have been counted towards what was liquidated, not the $1,000, but the most you could have lost would have been, well, not necessarily the most, but you would have lost the $1,000 plus on that trade. And so you didn't liquidate $100,000, you liquidated $1,000 in terms of what came out of your pocket. But when they report the actual liquidations, they're only going to report the amount of money that was actually uh, in that physical trade. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. I kind of covered it quickly. If it doesn't make sense, leave a comment in the, in, in, the, in the comment section below and I'll do my best to clarify it. Now, this happened all in a span of 24 hours. A healthy Bitcoin sentiment reset, according to Mohit Sarot. Range a couple of days, trap late bears, then run it back up. And so he's expecting for the next few days, it's going to kind of stay in a, a, a range right around the $9,500. He's thinking that a number of people are going to go short again, and that's they're going to get trapped as Bitcoin's price goes back up. Now here's the chart of the actual liquidations. And so this was the shorts that got liquidated. So Bitcoin went up a little bit and then it created a cascading effect of dominoes. And it's like knocking down that first domino and as those dominoes get knocked off, it moves the price up, which forces somebody else to get liquidated, which forces the price up and forces somebody else to get liquidated etc. until the price moved all the way up here and liquidated a whole lot of trades. And then this did just the opposite. As the price fell, it liquidated people who thought the price was going to go up. And you can see that, and, and, and I don't know how long this one took. It, this is a one hour bar, so it took less than an hour for this move to happen. But I do know from uh, conversations that this one took three minutes. Now, let that sink in for a second. Three minutes for all of those trades to get liquidated. A total of $96 million worth of trades got liquidated in three minutes. Wow. The reason why I emphasize that is because there's no way you could have tried to avert it. Once the dominoes started falling, they fell so fast and those trades got liquidated so fast, it just forced the price down, 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 down. And so there was, there was no opportunity to get out of this mess without having a loss if you were uh, you know, doing leveraged trading. So um, you know, this is just a, a good warning to be careful of. So do you recognize this pattern? There, there's actually a name to this particular pattern here. Let's take a look. It's, whoops, I went too fast. It's the Bart Simpson pattern. So I always think that's funny, especially when I see this pattern. Makes me think of Bart Simpson. Now we're going to take a look at what other analysts are saying about the situation that we're in. Okay, so now we had this great big pump and then we had this great big fall. Should we be concerned about the market? Should we be pulling out a Bitcoin and running with our hair on fire and screaming? Or is everything actually pretty fine? Is this kind of normal for the course? Should we just continue to hodl, to hold on for dear life, and wait, and wait out the storm? So, uh, senior commodities analyst at Bloomberg, Mike McLawn, says, Bitcoin is mirroring the 2016 return to its previous peak. Fast forward four years and the second year after the almost 75% decline in 2018, Bitcoin will approach the record high of about $20,000 this year in our view if it follows 2016's trend. So at the moment, it looks like this year is going to follow the 2016 trend and uh, I personally have a tendency to think that Mike has a, a, a really strong case for what he's arguing for, that Bitcoin will hit $20,000 this year. In fact, when you, when you take a look at my chart that I began with, holding, holding cryptocurrency for three years, as long as Bitcoin hits that $20,000 price and better before December 15th, 
then there even even up to that date, as long as it hits twenty thousand dollars sometime this year before December seventeenth, then there still will not be a single time in the history of Bitcoin whether you bought it in August fifteenth or August twenty eighth or what the date you bought it was. Uh, historically, if you bought Bitcoin, held it for three years, and then sold it, you would have made a profit. And so it's another good reason just to not mess with going on leverage trading when you can do something so simple as buy it, forget it, and sell it. And and hold it, just hold on to it for three years. So I know it's kind of tough when it's this volatile, but you know, keep it in mind. Give it consideration. Arthur Hayes, chief executive of BitMEX, everyone knows the shift is upon us. That is why central bankers and politicians will throw all of their tools at this problem. And I will reiterate, that is inflationary. Because more fiat money will chase a flat to declining supply of real goods and labor. There are only two things to own during the transition to whatever the new system is, and that is gold and Bitcoin. And so that's Arthur's opinion, and I tend to agree with Arthur's opinion here. Now, I'm not sure that gold and Bitcoin are the only things to own, um, but I do believe that gold and Bitcoin are probably... the. I think Bitcoin is the strongest thing to own, and that gold is also another good thing to own. And I also think that there'll be some stocks that will uh, flourish during this time. I mean, no matter when you look throughout history, no matter how bad it got in the general market, there were certain companies or even certain industries that have always flourished even in difficult times. What's hard is trying to identify those things. And... um, Historically, if you look at the the price of Bitcoin and how it's grown, in the last 10 years, there's nothing that has outperformed Bitcoin. And to the best of my knowledge, I would be surprised if anything outperforms Bitcoin in the near future. And so this is my opinion. This is not financial advice. But in my opinion, I think Bitcoin is probably the best asset for both the short-term and possibly long-term prospects. So Dan Moorhead of Pantera Capital, one of the leading crypto and blockchain-centric funds in the world, says, As governments increase the quantity of paper money, it takes more pieces of paper money to buy things that have fixed quantities like stocks and real estate above where they would settle absent an increase in the amount of money. I think they will do that. The corollary is they'll also inflate the price of other things like gold, Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies. And so ultimately, uh, the whole quantitative easing and its effect on the other markets is, it looks, in Dan Moorhead's opinion, that's going to end up being a good thing for Bitcoin. And that makes good sense to me. It makes good sense to me. So, If it doesn't make good sense to you, or if you have questions about it, let us know. How can I be of service to you? What what kind of questions do you have? Do you have any thoughts? Do you disagree with anything that we talked about today? I would love to hear your polite disagreements in the comments below. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.